Welcome back to Tyne Valley Motorhomes. I'm Callum and this is the handover of a Roller Team T-Line 590. We're starting the walk round on the driver's side of the vehicle first. You've got your Truma vent here which allows the gas fumes out for your hot water and your heating. And then further back you've got your fresh water filler. So using the habitation key you can pop that in and you've got a lockable cap so unlock it push it in twist grab yourself a hose pipe either a collapsible one or a normal one with some hose pipe connections as it's mainly just a brass tap on site and pop your hose into there and fill until it either overflows on or until you're happy you've got enough water on board which you can see on the main panel on board which i'll go through when i'm inside the vehicle and then further back, you do have your fresh, your hookup point. So to hook your vehicle up, you get your hookup lead, lift the collar, hook onto the van first, then to the site so that you're not walking around with a live lead. And then when you're unhooking, do it in reverse order. And there's a little black clip in the left hand corner, which you need to push down to release the pins. get the hooker bleed out. Coming to the back of the vehicle, you've got your high level brake light and your rear view reverse camera, followed by a four bike rack. So what that happens is this folds down. You put your wheels on the rail and connect these through your spokes to tie the wheels down you will have to do it in reverse order so one bike one way one bike the other and then you've got four handles which just means the furthest handle holds the crossbars on the back of the bikes just to keep them upright and then you'll need to put a bike lock or something around the bikes just to keep them safe if you ever pulled in to a services or leave the bikes unattended when you're out and not with the vehicle on the bottom you've got rear view, rear view, reverse sensors, sorry. And then on the back of the vehicle you do have your cassette toilet. So to operate your cassette toilet. So on the back of the vehicle, like I was saying, you do have your cassette toilet. So again, using the habitation key, you can unlock it push it in make sure that the blade is in the closed position so that the mechanism isn't engaged which i'll go through when on board and in the bathroom i'll show you how that works you'll be able to pull the blue clip and slide it free of the vehicle lift it out You've got a handle there so you can wheel it to the chemical waste disposal point on site which is normally beside your toilet block and then to empty, unscrew the blue cap, press the blue button and tip out. Once you've tipped it out, put some water in via the spout and give it a rinse, give it a shake. Tip out again and then fill with either your blue or your green chemical, which is just a cap full, straight in here and it's good to go back into the vehicle. But ask your sites which chemical they prefer to use because a lot of people now prefer the green than the blue because it's easier for septic tanks and things and not as harmful to the environment. <laughs> this is your garage. So you've got a shelf above. You can fold this shelf down and then you can access it from inside. And then you've got a few bits and pieces such as a horse pipe, leveling ramps, wastewater container, horn and winding handle and a step there. You've got your awning which winds out, we'll show you that on collection because it's just a little bit windy today so on collection we'll show you how your awning works really simple and then at the front of the vehicle you've got a wheel external barbecue point 
So this will power a Kadak uh, awning heater. There's a little fitting on the end of that's Jubilee clipped on. Cut that off. That sticks in there. Then you'll need some Jubilee clips and some gas hosing, which is orange rubber stuff. Connect it all together, then turn the tap and it'll allow the gas from the main bottle to be used on this point so you don't have to carry a spare bottle. And then at the front, LPG, liquid petroleum gas, this is your gas locker. So to operate your gas, obviously this is a refillable gasset bottle. So it's great thing this means that if you go abroad or you go further afield, you can always find gas. Pull the cover off and there's a bayonet fitting. So go to your local LPG centre, somewhere that sells it on the pump, maybe a petrol station or an LPG centre. You can get an app to locate them. The gun pushes on and then you twist the front and pull the trigger back and it's connected onto here and then you press the button on the display until simply it won't take any more. And I've filled this, this is full now. Uh, I took it up this morning and it took about 22 pound to fill the bottle. And you can turn the bottle on and off from the top here. So always turn it off when you travel and then when you arrive back on site, you can turn it back on. Like the gas taps on board the vehicle, which you'll see further in the video, this is a gas isolation tap for your external barbecue. So if that was leaking, you can shut off the gas supply so it doesn't cause any harm. And then at the front, diesel, this is a diesel filler. So it opens with the main ignition key that starts the vehicle and you'll be able to fill with diesel fuel. You've got your tyre pressures here, so 5 bar on the front which is 72.3 psi and 5.5 bar on the back which is 79.5. Weight plate, so 3.5 tonne gross vehicle weight. If you were to put a tow bar on, you can tow up to 5.5 tonne train weight. So that's the motorhome and whatever you're towing can't exceed that. So you've got a 2 tonne towing limit. Tool kit, which includes a jack and a brace and a tow knife underneath the passenger seat. And then your engine battery lives underneath this compartment. So if you've ever got to change it or charge it, just get a screwdriver or a flat coin or a key, the end of a key, and just open that up and you'll be able to lift this panel off. And your bonnet release is on the side of the dashboard. So having a quick look underneath the bonnet, you've got all your fluids to this side. So screen wash, this lifts off and you've got power steering coolant, brake fluid, oil filler and dipstick, paint coat on this sticker here and then for giving or receiving a jump start as the engine battery is in the cab floor, this is what you earth off, this bar here and then there's normally a cover on here so just put your key or a screwdriver in here if it's shut, lift this up and this is your positive beside the air filter for giving or receiving a jump start. Located just behind the skirt on the driver's side, beside the driver's door, is your wastewater. So this is anything that you've drained down a plug hole. We'll go to your wastewater tank. Simply open it before you leave site because you don't want to be driving around with the extra added weight of dirty water. So you'd open the valve and drain off your fresh water from here as it is just a tap. So just open it up and drain it off. And this is one of the points you want fully drained off in the winter as you wouldn't want the water to freeze. To operate your main control panel, first of all it tells you if you're hooked up or not which means you will, will be receiving 230 volts. If you're not then you will just have 12 volt off your leisure battery. You can turn the vehicle on and off here which is known as the master switch for the living area. And then going up on this side, you've got battery one, which is your engine battery. Battery two, which is your leisure battery reading. Your fresh water reading at the top, so you can see that we've got 100% of fresh water on board. And then this side, you've got the internal temperature, 13 degrees, your main circuit, switch for your lights, so this is like your master switch for your lights and they all are individually switched around the vehicle. 
your awning light on the outside of the vehicle and then at the top you put your pump so you can turn that on to pressurise your water should you have enough water on board and should your boiler be closed. So master switch, vehicle battery reading, leisure battery reading, fresh water reading, internal temperature, master switch for your lights, all in light which is the light on the outside of the vehicle and then the pump which pressurises the taps, toilet and shower. Top rate the Truma Combi system, so this is a gas system only, so it all is powered via gas. So in the middle there you'll notice it's off and you'll notice you've got one to five on the outside knob. So five is equivalent to 30 degrees, so 15 is equivalent to 13 and all that is is the temperature of the vehicle. So you go at the top here. And you can start off with 60 degrees of heating your water. And then you've got a lower water heating scale of 40 degrees of heating your water. And then you've got off. And then should you not have any water on board, you can just heat the vehicle on its own. And that's where this comes in, so you can adjust the temperature of the inside of the vehicle. 5 being 30 degrees, 3 being about 15 to 20 degrees. And then finally at the bottom, if you want hot water and heating together, you put on 60 degrees of water and the gas flame, which indicates that it's going to heat the vehicle and the water to 60 degrees. And like I say, it's only off gas, so make sure that you've got enough gas in your gas bottle for this to work. Top rate your fridge with separate freezer box. So you press and hold here to turn the fridge off and on and then you'll notice it goes to A and it's got a picture of a plug so the A stands for automatic energy selection so the module of the fridge will pick out what best source is available so we are hooked up and we've got gas on board so it knows not to waste the gas so it's when to hook up so this will now work as a household fridge on 230 volt if I was to unhook it, it would switch over to gas and self-ignite. Or if I was to start the engine, it would go to the battery setting, which isn't from the leisure battery. It's from the vehicle battery. When the vehicle is running, it sends a feed to the fridge to keep it at the same temperature it was at when you left the site. So basically it acts like a giant cool box. So you've got to be pre-chilled for this to work. So if you're lucky enough to keep this at home, a few days before you'll want to hook the vehicle up to charge your leisure battery. Put your fridge on, put it to full temperature which is this, this is the temperature scale here so put to full temperature. Allow it to chill for a day or so and then put your shopping in the night before you go away. And then let your shopping cool overnight and then when you come to unhook it, before you unhook it just start the engine, unhook the vehicle. It'll switch over to the battery and it'll keep that shopping nice and fresh until you either arrive back on site and hook the vehicle back up or it will switch over to gas if you don't hook up. But note when turn the engine off it waits 20 minutes before lighting on gas because if you are pulling for diesel it's the last thing you want is this to be sparking because it'll not be finding 230 volt, it'll not be finding 12 but your gas might be on so it will find gas. It's programmed to wait 20 minutes to get you out of any situations like that but if you wanted to change it manually you just press to gas temperature like I said 5 being the coldest when pre-chilling once you put your shopping in you might just want to drop it down to 3 or 4 because it can freeze the fridge and then you've got this switch here which is your frame heater which stops your rubbers from sticking to the door if you're away for a while and then one last thing with the fridge and freezer when you're not using it for any length of time, you'll want to, especially over the winter, but any length of time, a couple of weeks is long enough for smells and things to form. Take everything out, give it a wipe out with some antibacterial sprays and wipes, and then underneath each handle, you've got these little toggles, which are just designed to keep the door open. So we've got one there, one here. They're going to go in there. 
slot in and it just allows the door to stay open so it gets ventilation and stops the smells from forming in the vehicle. Above the fridge you do have your solar panel control out which is charging your leisure battery there it does its own thing it's flashing away it just means it's working and then you've got your tv aerial so you've got a fixed tv aerial on here so you can maximize the signal on the booster on the amplifier so if it's too strong you may just want to knock it down or if you're not getting a good enough signal you may just want to turn it off until you get a perfect signal where you're at but you also do have a good amount of storage in here to store bits and pieces in there as well. To lock the door, what you need to do is just lift the chrome catch up until it shows red. And then if you go straight for the handle behind, it'll automatically release. And you've got a blackout blind on the little window on the door to black it out on an evening. So now in the washroom, which is across the back of the vehicle, to operate your toilet, there's a little blue button here which is your fresh water flush so you need to make sure that the pump is on and then you'll be able to press the button and flush the toilet always put a little bit of water in first because it lubricates the seal between the blade and the cassette and then what you can do is before you use it you need to open the blade so this is the blade here this grey handle push it away from you to the right hand side and it'll open. You can then use the toilet, flush after use, and then slide this back to the left towards you to shut the blade. Doing it in that order will mean once the cassette is full, you can then get the cassette out the side of the vehicle with no dramas. Because if not, all you've done is you've left the blade open and the mechanism is still engaged and it won't come out. So if you look down here, you'll see a red, a green light that will go to red once the cassette is full. You've got your wardrobe, and then your garage space and a shelf. Your light switch is underneath your toiletry cabinet along with a three pin plug but I don't think that works I think that will be disabled because that's more for the European market than the UK just because you're not meant to have electrics in a washroom under the sink storage which you've got your hand base in there large mirror and then you do have your shower so just push these lights to the same as in the lounge so just touch them to come on you've got your shower cubicle with your shower doors tied back so make sure they are tied back when traveling it'll stop it making some noise when on the road and you do also have a handy towel rail holder when you've got a wet towel or you can put a few hangers on there hang your wet coats and trousers if you've been out on a walk or walking the dogs and you've got covered in mud or rain you can obviously hose them off in here we do recommend that in the winter months when winterizing the vehicle is when you want to drain all the water out of the vehicle leave all your mixer taps open if you just unscrew your shower head from your hose because any water could potentially sit coiled up in here Leave your mixer tap open on your shower and leave your hose head in your shower tray. Your fresh and your waste water would be open anyway. And then I'll tell you how to drain down your boiler further on in the video. So located behind the driver's seat, if you lift the cushions off, under this little section here is where the boiler is. So if you look down Right down, you'll see that there's a blue diamond, which is on a Truma frost control valve. And what that does is it, it protects against frost. So when that detects the cold, when not in use, it will release the water in the boiler, which the boiler holds 10 litres of water to stop the boiler from freezing. Because if the water was to freeze in the boiler, 
it's a very costly mistake and it's a new boiler job so what you've got to do is just check on it so at the minute down this side of it you'll see that there isn't a blue button sticking out because it's holding the water and on the top it's flush there's no black diamond in the middle of the blue diamonds sticking out which is a black nib but what you can do is if you're draining the vehicle down obviously empty the fresh empty the waste open all your taps and then what you can do is if you just come in and turn it you'll see that the, it's the other way and what that does is it lets the water out of the vehicle but you want to do that without the pump on so you want to do it without any power on and you want to drain the vehicle down obviously you don't rely on it automatically dropping the water because if that ever does become faulty it's a costly mistake to make like I've said so just keep an eye on it and if you're ever in the situation where it's cold outside and you're using it and the button keeps popping out just put the heating on first on its own for five minutes that'll warm this area up then you'll be able to pop your hand down and push the button in on the side and then prime the water through so once you've opened the valve you will then have to prime the, the water back through the taps so on the cold side it automatically has a pressurized flow of water because it draws it from the tank underneath the van which is a fresh water tank directly to the tap on the hot side it transfers it from the fresh water tank into the boiler and then to the tap so there's it's a little bit longer of a process on the hot side and it'll cough split and make all sorts of noises until you get a free flow of water from the hot side this is when you know that your system is then primed but it's very important that you drain your vehicle down especially in the winter not so much in the summer because there's going to be no damage we've got warmer weather but in the, in the winter you will have to drain it down because if we suffer from a hard frost and water's left in the vehicle it can cause damage to pipeworks, tanks and boilers and isn't covered under any form of warranty as it's your responsibility to drain the vehicle down from frost damage so in the kitchen area you do have three gas rings you will need a lighter of some sort so either a long match like so or a spark igniter as it hasn't got a piezo ignition on the hob and then once you've had them on allow them to cool before you do put the glass lid down otherwise you can shatter the glass lid just with it being warm and glass and you don't want that because it goes into a million pieces and then below you've got your grill so just hold it in for a couple of seconds longer for the thermocouple to warm to allow the gas to continue to come through the valve and then below you've got your oven You may want to take your grill pan and oven shelf out while travelling or wrap them up as they can cause a little bit of rattling when on the road. Below you do have your trips on mains electric. So if you trip the vehicle try here before you try your site. And you've got your gas isolation valves. These are mainly for when the vehicle is annually habitation serviced. Any problems with gas turn the bottle off to be safe. Slide out racks, obviously plates, plates go in there, cups go in there I think. Drawer, you can get an insert for a cutlery tray to go in there. And then a large drawer at the bottom. Switch on the end of the light underneath the kitchen. And then some storage up above. And this is just showing that your water system's working and that's hot water there it's getting up the temperature lovely so your hot water system is working fine underneath this settee lifting the panel that's behind the dry the passenger seat sorry you do have your Varta leisure battery and then you do have all your 12 volt fuses so they are listed what they do in the ampage on here so do carry some spares 
you'll need a variety of 10, 5, 15, 25, 20 amp fuses which you can get all from your local motor factors or online and just carry some spares with you and then if a fuse blows you can just pick the fuse out and replenish the fuse so they make the bottom bed up out of the table underneath the table there's a lever here so if you push it away from you and put your weight on the table itself So push the lever towards you, to the front of the cab, position the table, and then it's quite a tough table, but you've got to put your body weight behind it. Push it down until it clicks into place like so, and that's making the bed. You grab the infill cushion from out the garage or wardrobe, and that goes in here, and then you use your base cushion there and drop your backrest into here then you have formed the double bed across the width of the lounge so to operate your drop down bed so you've got a switch on the front you've got to make sure on your main control panel that you do have the light circuit switched on, so the master switch for the lights, because that's how it's wired. And then you can press and hold the switch. Don't press, 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 just press and hold. You'll be able to bring the bed down and stop it at any height if you're using it as a double bunk. If you're bringing it all the way down, if it's just two of you, you need to remove your backrests, so because it will not pass those. You can bring it down. You put your ladder on the front, which clips on there clips on here and you do have nets underneath so if you're putting children in they'll attach to these just to stop them ro rolling out on an evening so there's one there one there one on the side of the cupboard and then you'll see if you look this end you've got three there two on the gable end one in the middle of the roof just to stop them rolling out if they're up there so underneath your traveling seat is where your fresh water tank lives. So if you remove your cap, what you can then do is, you'll see the T piece in there, that's your drain plug. So when you finish using the vehicle, you don't want water to stay, sit stagnant in there or you're draining down for the winter. Just pop your hand in, pull the handle, Stand it up and twist it, and what that'll do is it'll allow the water out, draining directly out underneath the chassis. So it's very important in the winter that you leave no water on board because it can freeze and split this tank and you wouldn't want it to flood the inside of your vehicle. And there is two in this tank, so stand that one up and pull that one out. That one acts like a plug and it will drain the content of the fresh water tank out underneath the chassis. So now in the cab, to the right of the driver you do have your handbrake and then on the driver's door you have your driver and passenger electric windows and then at the front you've got your electric window adjustment so you can go from the top one to the bottom one which is the blind spot and adjust it electronically from inside the vehicle. They do just fold manually and then to black the driver and passenger doors out on an evening you've it is fitted with remis carb line so pinch with your thing your finger and your thumb slide it down like so and that'll black out the passenger and driver's door pinch the windscreen one and slide them together and that'll black out the windscreen and then you do have your 
rear fog lights, headlight adjustment, your Sigma alarm, which there's an instruction book on that, but you just need to lock the vehicle for that to work. But you can pop the cord in here if it was ever not responding to the key. Trip computer, so that'll go through your range, your traveling times, your average consumption, your instant consumption, whilst moving, average speed, traveling time, and the date. Lights and indicators, obviously steering wheel controls, mute volume, and send decline a call. That'll scroll through your, your media, your radio station, or your contacts. And then at the bottom, you've got off, Go at the top, you've got cruise control, get your desired speed and push up and that'll set the cruise control. You can cancel the cruise control off on the end of the stalk and press resume or with a foot brake to cancel it. Obviously up and down to speed up and slow down or you can go down the bottom one which is a speed limiter. So if you're in a average 50 mile an hour camera zone, you can go up slowly and it goes up in ones or you can press and hold and go up in fives and you can see in the top Left hand corner, it says limb off. Once the engine's on and you push it up, the limit will stay on. You can feather the throttle. It's once you floor the vehicle, the speed limiter will then disactivate due to a safety feature and allow you to get up to speed. So just watch that you just go light on the accelerator and you'll not go over the speed limiter. As this is a Comfortmatic gearbox, you've got neutral at the top, so you can either park it in gear, handbrake on, or park it in neutral, handbrake on. There's no park as such, so you do have to use the handbrake. You go down in to automatic, and it'll say auto one. That means it'll change gear itself. If it just says one, it's in manual mode, and you can go up and down. But just press auto. And you can go all the way down to reverse, which will bring on So you've got a rear view all the time, which is this one here. And then when you go into reverse, it will come on as well. It's just because at present the engine's not going, so you've got to have the engine on for the rear view camera, the reverse camera to come on. But this is the rear view one, so it's the same view anyway. Cup holders, auxiliary, so 3.5 milli jack and USB. ASR off is just another word for turning your traction control off. You've got your hazards, locks the doors, the cab doors, you've got to manually lock the habitation door, the garage door, the, the gas locker, the cassette by yourself. Heated mirrors, if they were wet or misty you can clear your view so you can see outside the vehicle. And then you do have 12 volt and USB for charging. Climate control, so on the left hand outer ring is your temperature and on the inside is your fan speed it must be on at least one or more for the aircon to come on which is this one here and then you do have your distribution so where you wanted to go to face feed screen and whether you're bringing fresh air in or recirculating there and finally your radio operate your radio you turn on and off from here and it's FM, AM radio, so you can press 1 to 6 to save your favourite channels. Media is either USB or auxiliary. Doesn't take a CD. And then to connect your phone, you'd press phone. Connect a phone. You want to add a phone. And you want to find you connect on your device. Pair with that. It'll then come up on your phone. Would you allow to connect to you connect press allow do you want your contacts to be saved and downloaded press yes and it'll save your contacts into here so when you press phone you can press into contacts and you can scroll through using this dial here and ring whoever you want whoever saved whoever then does ring will come up with a name instead of just a number on there and then you've got settings so you can do your audio the traffic announcements and so on you can turn on and off via here.